Mr. Bloom, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, tomorrow is Inauguration Day, which means another four years of Obama's foreign policy. Uh, how would you describe his first term? Uh, what changes or lasting legacies, if any, has Mr. Obama introduced? If you're speaking about his foreign policy, I'm sorry to say there's no change of any significance between his policies and those of George W. Bush. Uh, in fact, if anything, they're worse. He, he has invaded, he has waged war against about seven or eight countries in, in his four years in office. That's really an amazing record. In fact, I thought on several occasions that if, if I would meet him in person, I would say, uh, Mr. President, in your time in office, you have waged war against, and then I would name all these countries, and then I would say, uh, with all due respect, uh, what is wrong with you? I mean, because a normal person doesn't go around the world invading and killing people like that. And he, he assass besides countries, he assassinates individuals on a regular basis. Uh, every Tuesday he meets with his advisors to choose who will, who will be the targets of next week's drone attacks. The kill list. The kill list, yeah. yeah. Um, there was actually a recent, uh, recently there was an article in the National Interest comparing the Obama Doctrine to the Reagan Doctrine because they both uh, have resorted to uh, the use of proxies rather than direct intervention. Uh, can you comment on that? Well, what, what Obama has done in Afghanistan is not a proxy thing. What he's done in Iraq is not a proxy thing. No, it's Somalia and, and Yemen are not proxy thing. It's, it's American military, American uh, aircraft, American drones. The only Libya, America was a full participant with NATO in shooting missiles into Libya almost every day for seven months. The only proxy thing I can think of would be currently in Syria, the U.S does not have any boots on the ground, as they say, and as far as, I, as far as we know, I wouldn't swear by that. And American planes are not overhead. I mean, they're not bombing, but they're probably spying and passing the information on to the so-called rebels who are just a bunch of Al-Qaeda terrorists. And that's who our, our, our allies are. If you want a side, a side view, this is the fifth time by my count, that the U.S. has fought on the same side as terrorists linked to Al-Qaeda. What are the other four times? It, the first one was in Afghanistan, and then, and then in, in, in the former Yugoslavia, in, in Bosnia, and in Kosovo, and then in Libya, and now Syria. That's five times we have fought on the same side as Al-Qaeda. It's amazing. Uh, the drone appears to be Obama's favorite tool of American imperialism. These have been used to bomb funerals, uh, rescue workers, entire civilian communities in Pakistan, Yemen, elsewhere. Uh, in addition to terrorizing local communities into passivity so they don't catch Arab Spring fever, uh, do you think it's possible that these drone strikes are being carried out to intentionally create more anti-American sentiment to justify the continuation of the global war on terror? Well, that, that's a level of cynicism even above my own, I think. Uh, uh, I don't think they want to create more, more anti-American terrorists, but they can't help doing it. They're, 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 the, the very existence of the empire, its goals of world domination, cannot avoid creating numerous anti-American terrorists. So it, it doesn't, whether it's, whether it's intentional or not, there's no suicide the point. They're, they're doing it every day. Uh, Manuel Zelaya, president of Honduras, was ousted in a military coup in July of 2009. 
uh, the coup regime, which was endorsed and recognized by President Obama while opposed by almost all of Latin America and Europe, uh, proceeded to unleash a brutal campaign of political violence, uh, murder against the population, seize control of the media. Uh, with the information that's available, is it appropriate to accuse the United States of playing a crucial role in this military coup? Yeah, I, uh, definitely. I, I forget all the details right now, but uh, at the time it happened, uh, the, the American fingerprints were there. Uh, and it's not surprising. Uh, we've been doing the same thing for 60 years in Latin America. Uh, we don't look favorably upon any Latin American government that is going to qu question seriously the goals and tactics of the American Empire. It, uh, from Cuba to, to, to Nicaragua to Chile and Argentina, you name it, they, they've all been uh, attacked. Uh, so why, why would Honduras be different? Uh, President Obama received unanimous isolation from Latin American leaders at the summit of the Americas in April. Uh, Evo Morales, President of Bolivia, described it as a rebellion of Latin American countries against the United States. Can you describe the changes that have taken place in Latin America in recent years, uh, the so-called pink tide? Well, that, that was, that, the example you gave just now is, 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 uh, was a nice culmination to of, of about seven or eight years of change in Latin America. Uh, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Cuba, and a few others who are not as much in the news, but are very sympathetic to these, these others, like um, Uruguay and Honduras until we overthrew them. And I probably missed one or two. It's, the change is amazing. Um, but the U.S. is not sitting still. Uh, one by one, they, they, they've been aiming to undo all these changes. They, they've already succeeded in Honduras and in uh, where was the other government they ever through? Paraguay? Very good, Paraguay. Yeah, yeah that this was past they, summer. So that is two, two down of us, six or seven to go. Uh, it's scary, the, the power they have to to effect change of all kinds all over the world. Do you think they're going to move on Venezuela again, like they attempted to? Uh... Well, th they certainly have not given up uh, any ambition to overthrow the government, but uh, at some point it became so obvious that anything which happened in Venezuela, the U.S. couldn't, couldn't even begin to deny their involvement. So, that's so obvious now. And now with uh, Chavez in, in hospital, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, if his successes stay, stay true to his beliefs as they, as they indicate, then U.S. policy will not change. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see.